Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. Here's what we're going to cover today. Israel's security cabinet on Sunday authorized Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government to decide on the, quote, manner and timing of a response to a rocket strike in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights that killed 12 teenagers and children over the weekend. Israel and the United States both blamed the attack on the Lebanese armed group Hezbollah. We got the latest details on that. A key Google feature is failing to show results for the attempted assassination of Donald Trump, drawing claims from the former president's son, Don Jr., that big tech companies are trying to influence the election and ignore the attempt on his dad's life. We have those details as well. Meanwhile, a police sharpshooter on a local tactical team assigned to the rally said there was no contact between their SWAT team and the U.S. Secret Service before President Trump was shot, prompting the Secret Service to issue a statement yesterday afternoon. We have that statement for you as well. Three Palestinian migrants who crossed into the United States illegally through the southern border were detained after they were found to have terrorist ties, according to media reports. And this is just an example of some of the people who are getting into our country. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign has raised $200 million since she emerged as the likely Democrat presidential nominee last week, an amazing amount of money in her race against former President Donald Trump. Newsmax is reporting that Israeli's security uh, cabinet on Sunday afternoon authorized Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to decide on what the response will be to the rocket strike in the Golan Heights that killed 12 teenagers and children at this soccer match. Um, Just a horrible, horrible tragedy. Hezbollah denied responsibility for the attack on the uh, on the soccer field on Saturday, the deadliest in Israel uh, or any Israeli annexed territory since the Palestinian militant group Hamas invaded Israel last October 7th, which uh, has sparked the war in Gaza. That conflict has spread to several fronts and risks spilling into a wider regional conflict as these uh, additional Conflicts flare up on both sides of Israel, the south and the north. Israel has vowed retaliation against Hezbollah in Lebanon. Israeli jets hit targets in southern Lebanon uh, over the uh, weekend after the attack, but there were expectations that a stronger response would follow, according to security cabinet members and the meeting that was convened by Netanyahu upon his return to Tel Aviv after his U.S. uh, trip last week. After the meeting ended, Netanyahu's office said that the cabinet, quote, authorized the prime minister and the defense minister to decide on the manner and timing of the response. Now, the White House yesterday blamed Hezbollah for the uh, strike, saying this attack was conducted by Lebanese Hezbollah. It was their rocket and launched from an area they control. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, said through her national security advisor that, quote, her support for Israel's security is ironclad, although she told Netanyahu reportedly last week that she wanted to see a ceasefire in uh, in Gaza quickly. Uh, the U.S. said Washington has been in discussions with Israeli and Lebanese counterparts since Saturday's horrific attack and that it was working on a, quote, diplomatic solution. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington did not want further escalation of the conflict, which has seen daily exchanges of fire along the um, Israeli-Lebanese border for a number of months now. Uh, Other countries around the the world are also weighing in. 
Britain expressed concern at further escalation, while Egypt said that the attack could spill into a comprehensive regional war. On the ground, thousands of people gather for funerals in the Druze village of Majdal Shams in the Golan Heights. Uh, This is a territory that was captured from Syria by Israel in the 1967 Middle East War and annexed into a move not recognized by a lot of the Mideastern countries in the area. Uh, Members of the Druze faith, which is related to Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, uh, made up more than half the 40,000-strong population of the Golan Heights, Large crowds of mourners, many in traditional high white and red druze headwear, surrounded caskets as they were carried through the village. It it was just heartbreaking to see some of these images. Heartbreaking to think about what these families are going through. It's so unnecessary. And for the world or parts of the world to be hesitant on Israel's response and look, nobody wants this es- uh, an escalated war in this region of the, of the world. But if you don't want the war to escalate, then don't be killing innocent people in Israel. I mean, these kids were at a soccer match having their, their normal Saturday afternoon fun with families all around, and, and this horrible, horrible attack takes place. And now Israel's supposed to turn the other cheek? Hezbollah initially announced that it fired the rockets at Israeli military sites in the Golan Heights, but said that it had absolutely nothing to do with the attack on this, uh, on this soccer field. So they admit that they fired rockets, but they claim that it wasn't, their rockets were not the ones who killed these innocent victims. However, Israel said that the rocket was an Iranian-made missile fired from an area north of the village of Shaba in southern Lebanon, placing the blame squarely on Iranian-backed Hezbollah. Israel released a, a uh, details of the rocket that is clearly an Iranian-made rocket. Uh, it was not immediately clear if the children and teenagers who were killed Uh, were Israeli citizens, and that information has not been released. Israel's foreign ministry said the rocket that murdered our boys and girls was an Iranian rocket, and Hezbollah is the only terror organization which has those in its arsenal. Former Senator Rick Santorum on Newsmax said Hezbollah's attack was another Iranian-backed mission enabled by the Joe Biden-Kamala Harris administration, saying as a result, U.S. policy has empowered Iran with resources to support terrorist organizations in their attacks on Israel, with the U.S. being their ultimate target. Well, I think uh, one of the things that people may not recognize is that Hezbollah, which is at the northern part of Israel, uh, they're in Lebanon, which is north of Israel, have been have been attacking Israel pretty consistently since uh, since the October seventh uh, attack in uh, in in Israel by by the Gazans. And this is this is part of a coordinated effort uh, by Iran. This is you, you mentioned these are Iran uh, rockets. This is Iran funding terrorist organizations in the north, which is Hezbollah in the south, which is Hamas, the Houthis, Yemen in the in the in the Gulf, uh, also south of uh, of Iran. This is a and then the direct attack Iran has on on Israel themselves when firing the rockets. So this is a this is a Iran backed mission. Uh, these are just basically satellite groups that that Iran funds, and and they have the ability to do so because the Biden Harris administration has funded Iran, lifted sanctions, given them money, uh, tried to become their friends so they could reestablish another nuclear accord uh, with them. That was a failed accord in the first place that Trump got rid of rightly. Uh, And this is all because of U.S. policy. So let's just cut to the chase of this. U.S. policy has empowered Iran with resources to fund these organizations to to attack Israel, which, as, as the Iranians always say, there's two objectives to what Iran is doing. Number one, the great Satan, which is uh, the United States, and the little Satan, which is Israel. Now they're attacking the little Satan, but their goal is the great Satan. And the senator is right. Their goal is to come after us. We're the great Satan. Two security sources told Reuters that Hezbollah 
was on high alert and had cleared some key sites in both Lebanon South and the eastern Becca Valley in case of an Israeli strike. Lebanon's Middle East airline said that it was delaying the arrival of some flights from uh, yesterday night until sometime today or maybe later in the week. Israeli forces have been exchanging fire for months with Hezbollah fighters in southern Lebanon. And, and this is an area, what you have to remember is the Jordan River separates a lot of this area. I, I have been there a number of times. I, I have been baptized in the Jordan River. And on the other side of the river, on the, other, on, the, uh, on the bank, you see an armed guard keeping you from going into uh, Syria and that, that uh, Lebanon region. This is, this is a very small area. It'd be kind of like going from South Carolina to North Carolina or into Georgia. I mean, they're just that close together. And look, no, nobody wants further war in, the, in that region, but Israel can't just be expected to turn the other cheek when these types of attacks take place. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your, your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today. 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation with PhD Weight Loss and Nutritious. Boy, am I glad that I met Dr. Ashley Lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy. You're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again. Uh, play with the kids, the grandkids, be able to, to hike and, and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18 round, uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864-252-4925. Call, set up your initial consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. A key Google feature is failing to show results for the attempted assassination of Donald Trump a couple of weekends ago, drawing claims from the former president's son that big tech companies are trying to influence the election. It has also sparked a Senate investigation. Here's what we know. Google users were surprised to discover that the search engine's autocomplete was apparently omitting suggested results related to the assassination attempt against Donald Trump. The anomaly quickly caught the attention of social media users, including a Texas congressman and Donald Trump Jr., who began sharing screenshots of their own examples showing Google search suggestions coming up empty for queries about the deadly Pennsylvania uh, rally shooting on July 13th. There's no mention of Trump, even when the entire search term, the assassination attempt of, is typed into the Google homepage search bar. Try it yourself. The, the, the New York Post performed a series of test Google searches with the last names of U.S. presidents who were killed or faced attempts on their lives by the letters assassa, uh, not, not completely spelling out the word, to see what autocomplete suggested, including John F. Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, and Teddy Roosevelt. In each instance, a helpful list of recommended search terms related to the attempts on their lives popped up. Uh, you know how when you're searching for something, Google will automatically complete what they think you're, what you're searching for. And th this is what they, what they tried to do, and you can even start Spelling the name Trump out, you can do T-R-U is what, you, what I did, and it still does not come up. When Trump's name was used, autocomplete offered no su uh, suggestions whatsoever. Nothing. Even the key words, Trump assassination attempt, doesn't give you any additional uh, terms from Google either. 
Google search results still points to news articles about the July 13th shooting. A Google spokesperson told the uh, New York Post that there was no, quote, manual action taken on these predictions and that its systems include protections against autocomplete predictions associated with political violence. Oh, suddenly Google is concerned about political violence. They said, we're working on improvements to ensure our systems are more up to date. Of course, autocomplete is just a tool to help people save time, and they can still search for anything they want to. Following this terrible act, people turned to Google to find high-quality information. We connected them with helpful results and will continue to do so, the Google spokesperson said. Once uh, word of the oddity spread, it caught the attention of thousands of users on various social media platforms who were able to recreate the search on their own, including Texas GOP Representative Chip Roy, who wrote, quote, can verify alongside a screenshot of his own attempted search. Trump Jr. also shared an ex post featuring a screenshot of autocomplete results, which he called intentional election interference by Google. He he wrote to his 11.7 million followers, Big Tech is trying to interfere in the election again, all caps, to help Kamala Harris. We all know this is intentional election interference from Google, truly despicable. Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas took to social media as well to express his outrage about the omission, saying he planned to make an official inquiry into the Mountain View, California company this coming week. Do do you think that the U.S. Senate, the U.S. House, should investigate Google over something like this? Is this election interference you believe uh senator marshall went on to say why is google suppressing the search about the trump assassination attempt these are all screenshots from this morning has there been a dramatic increase in truman biographers in the last two weeks he asked referring to examples of searches he included with his post that return results about harry truman instead of donald trump he said i look forward to hearing their response and again I tried the search myself. You can do it too, and and I would encourage you to do so. I tried attempted assassination of TRU, and typically this would have completed the, the, the name for me. What it did was it gave me attempted assassination of Truman, first attempted assassination of U.S. President, attempted assassination of President Truman, Attempted assassination of Harry Truman. And get this one. Attempted assassination of Fidel Castro. But not once does it say attempted assassination of Donald Trump or Trump, which typically it would. When you when you type in TRU, what's the next obvious other than Truman? It would be Trump since Trump is most recent. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secret Service yesterday issued a response to reports about the lack of communication between agencies during the attempted assassination uh, in Butler, Pennsylvania. As we all know, July 13th, Thomas Matthew Crooks was able to gain access to a roof, giving him clear line of sight to Donald Trump speaking at this rally. Crooks fired off eight rounds, grazing President Trump's ear, killing one man, unfortunately, injuring two others before he was shot and killed himself by a sniper. Several reports have emerged since the shooting that suggest law enforcement was aware of a suspicious person, though they still allow Trump to take the stage, bringing into question the lack of communication between the agencies. A police officer on a local tactical team assigned to the rally said, told ABC News yesterday that they were never briefed. Here's Beaver County's lead sharpshooter, Jason Woods, on ABC yesterday. We were supposed to get a face-to-face briefing with the Secret Service snipers um, whenever they arrived, and that never happened. So I think that that was probably a pivotal point where I started thinking things were wrong because that never happened, and we had no communication with the Secret Service. You had no communication with the Secret Service at all on that Saturday? Not until after the shooting. And by then? It was too late. Wow. And this is from an actual local police officer and and you know that's been part of what the secret service has told us since the shooting was that they had coordinated 
with local law enforcement and that there were a lot of agencies involved. And, and that's typically how these events go. But this is amazing, is it not? That, and this this interview on ABC yesterday had not only uh, Mr. Woods, but I don't know, eight or ten others on his team saying that they had not been briefed, that they had not been, uh, there was no coordination between them and the Secret Service. It's no wonder that Donald Trump was allowed to take the stage that day. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and used today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, a proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign has raised $200 million since he emerged as the likely Democrat presidential nominee last week after Joe Biden dropped out. This amazing amount of money that she raised in her race against Donald Trump has all of Washington a buzz and the Democrat party. And it should have us concerned as well. This is why I've been saying we cannot take Kamala Harris too lightly. I think Donald Trump can beat her in November, but she will be a formidable opponent. And with Barack Obama, with the Clintons and with All of the Democrats seem to be rallying around her, supporting her. We have a campaign on our hands. And and the fact that she was able to raise $200 million in just a week, that's concerning. That's very concerning. The campaign announced its latest fundraising yesterday, said that the bulk of the donations, 66%, come from first-time contributors, which is concerning in itself as well these are people who have never contributed to to the biden campaign or to kamala harris's campaign in this 2024 election cycle and they were made after joe biden announced that he would drop out of the race and endorse kamala harris 200 million dollars with 66 percent of these people being brand new contributors Over 170,000 volunteers, they say, have also signed up to help the Harris campaign with phone banks, with uh, door knocking, canvassing, and other get-out-the-vote efforts. Election Day is, what, like 99 days away. The uh, campaign, Michael Tyler, the uh, Harris communications director, wrote in a memo, the momentum and energy for Vice President Harris is real. And so are the fundamentals of this race. This election will be very close and decided by a small number of voters in just a few states. And he's right. It will be. And that's why we can't take it for granted. Yes, we had the momentum. Well, we have a a good candidate. We have a good uh, candidate for vice president. We have a great ticket in Trump and Vance. Now we all have to go to work. Now we all have to make sure that Our friends, our family, our co-workers are all educated on why we cannot allow Kamala Harris to assume the role from from Joe Biden. Harris's campaign said it held some 2,300 organizing events in battleground states this weekend as several high-profile Democrats under consideration to serve as Harris's uh, running mate are out stumping for her. 
Now, here's an observation I have. This took a lot of organizing in a week's time. I don't think it's possible to have kicked this off in in such a manner this quickly had Kamala Harris not been preparing for this. Now, I don't know how much advance notice, uh, and and maybe she just suspected that Joe Biden was going to drop out. But there's no way that they threw this together, raised $200 million in a week, signed up 170,000 volunteers and they and they didn't have some idea that they were going to have to spring in action and get this done. Now granted, they they did. They she's using the Joe Biden operation as well. But still, and I hate to say this, but this is quite the task, folks, for them to have been able to to do this in a week's time. Now, I still argue, and I told you this last week, Kamala Harris is seeing her best days. She's in the honeymoon period. It's not going to get any better than this. We got to hope it's going to, that it's going to start going downhill. As soon as the American people start really understanding what she stands for, I think we're going to see things turn around. Harris campa- uh, campaign in Pittsfield, Massachusetts over the weekend reportedly drawing hundreds to a fundraiser that had been organized when Biden was still up at the top of the ticket. So they just kind of stepped into this. The fundraiser had originally been expected to raise 400000 when Joe Biden was going to be the top candidate. It brought in $1.4 million, according to the Harris campaign. So an extra million dollars because of the excitement around a new candidate by way of, of Kamala Harris. Mandy Robbins of Decatur, Georgia, drove to one of the uh, organizing events Sunday in the northern suburbs of Atlanta. This is according to an article in, uh, on Fox, uh, Fox News. Said that uh, she went to hear Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, who, who, by the way, of course, is a potential Harris running mate. You had, all, you had Andy Bashir, Mark Kelly, Pete Buttigieg. You had all these, these guys who are being considered as vice presidential candidates out campaigning for Kamala Harris. They were really kind of uh, interviewing, if you will, auditioning for the role as vice president. Uh, Ms. Robbins said that she thought Biden did a great job in the White House, but acknowledged she would not have been nearly this excited if he had remained in the race. She said, I feel hopeful now. I feel that we can win this with Harris. And, And that's sort of what we have to be aware of. And, and I've I heard that from a lot of people over the weekend as well, is that the Democrats are re-energized because b- before they thought they were stuck with Joe Biden and they didn't think he could win. They think Kamala Harris can win now, so they have a renewed enthusiasm. Bashir, uh, Governor Bashir spoke from experience to supporters, telling them that their work would be would make the difference in what is expected to be a close race. Bashir won his 2019 campaign by a margin of 5,000 votes or 1.41 million out of 1.4 million uh, ballots cast. He was reelected last November by a relatively comfortable margin, but he's used to hard fought campaigns. He told the group every door knocked mattered, every phone call mattered, every difficult conversation that people had with their uncle at Thanksgiving mattered. Everyone here today that signs up to volunteer, you might be the difference in winning this race for Vice President Harris, he said. Meanwhile, Trump running mate uh, J.D. Senator J.D. Vance and their surrogates were out campaigning as well, um, trying to contrast Kamala Harris and J.D. Vance, trying to paint the picture that Kamala Harris is a far-left politician out of touch with the American mainstream. And that's what we have to do. We have to stay on point. We have to let people know that Kamala Harris is part of the reason that our gasoline prices are still three bucks or higher a gallon. We have to let people know that it was a Biden-Harris ticket who has interest rates so high. We have to remind people that it was Biden-Harris, Kamala Harris, 
who is the reason that the southern border is broken. We have to remind people that, like Senator Lindsey Graham said over the weekend, there's no liberal horse that she has not chosen to ride, and that she was the most liberal senator in the U.S. Senate when she was representing California. Senator Tom Cotton uh, also branded Kamala Harris as a full partner for a, quote, lot of worse decisions of the Biden administration, including the chaotic August 2021 pullout of U.S. troops led to uh, swift collapse of the Afghan government military. He also talked about how the Biden-Harris administration has emboldened Iranian proxies Hamas and Hezbollah by pressing Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over civilian casualties in the war in Gaza, and that their their weak support at times or, or the appearance of weak support. And again, Kamala, just last week, very proud of the fact that she told Benjamin Netanyahu that it needed to be a ceasefire pretty quickly. Maybe that's what led to Saturday's slaughter of those 12 innocents at the soccer f- uh, field. Senator Cotton had this to say. Well, Jake, what I'm worried about is the running back terrorists continuing to blow up innocent children in Israel. Uh, that's what we saw yesterday in this heinous attack. Last October, we saw a running back terrorists kill more than 1,200 Jews in the worst atrocity against Jews since World War II. Um, this week, Kamala Harris, in her very first statement, and still to my knowledge, only statement, on a matter of great public importance, came out after a meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu and equivocated between Hamas and Israel and effectively blamed Israel for civilian casualties in Gaza or for the lack of food in Gaza that Hamas is diverting from aid stations. Um, That simply makes it harder to get a peace deal. It makes it harder to have stability in the Middle East. And frankly, it emboldens Iran and terrorist groups like Hezbollah because they believe that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will continue to put more pressure on Israel than it puts on Iran and its terrorists that are encircling Israel with the stated objective to destroy Israel. What we should do is back Israel to the hilt, not put pressure on Israel, not scramble behind the scenes to try to stop Israel from retaliating appropriately for this heinous attack that killed more than a dozen people, including children. And remember, Netanyahu met separately with Harris and Joe Biden last week at the White House. Afterwards, Harris said that she had urged Netanyahu to reach a ceasefire deal soon with the militant group Hamas so that dozens of hostages held by the militants in Gaza Uh, since October 7th, can be returned home. Harris said that she was also affirmed Israel's right to defend itself, but expressed deep concern about the high death toll in Gaza and the dire humanitarian situation there. I wonder what she thinks, and and she hasn't really said that much other than Israel has the right to defend itself. wonder what she thinks about the attack on these innocent children on the soccer field on Saturday. This is why we cannot allow Kamala Harris to become president. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, Either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single track transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, They service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Fred writes on the uh, text line, shrapnel can be parts of a bullet which has struck an object. It can be parts of bits of an object 
which has been struck by an object, etc. For there to be shrapnel, the projectile must have struck something. The proper follow-up question would have been, have you identified what the projectile struck to cause the shrapnel? Now, now this is in response, of course, uh, to FBI Director Christopher Wray, who says that he doubts or, or has questions on whether or not it was actually a bullet that struck Donald Trump's ear that caused caused the the damage to his ear. Fred says Ray is not being forthright. There's another reason why citizens' faith in the administration of these agencies is being tried. There is a photo which has been circulated since the assassination attempt, which shows a still shot of an actual projectile which has flown past Donald Trump, uh, and that's that's a valid photo. It was released by AP, and they vouch for its authenticity. And you can see, you can it. it I, I forget they explain how this was taken by a very high speed camera, but you can literally see the bullet behind his head. Look, Christopher Ray, the Biden administration, they just do not want Donald Trump to be a martyr. They do not want for Donald Trump to be able to say that he was uh, that there was an attempted assassination on his life. Uh, Christie says, as far as Kamala and her failing at the southern border, well, I think she hasn't failed at all. She has followed her instructions, and I'm sure that's to allow all she could across the border. That's a success as far as the administration goes. She, like the rest of those idiots, have failed America and its people. Traitors are the only title that fits any of them. Jeff writes, I think if you burn an American flag, you should be sentenced to life to hard labor in prison. Send, uh, send of the Pakistan, let them, oh, send them to Pakistan, let them li- live over there since, I, since they love it so much. Look, uh, Jeff, I think you know that, uh, uh, that they don't care if they're burning our flag. I'm sure he's referencing the, the demonstrations that we saw by pa- Palestinians in Washington, D.C., in our nation's capital, when Israeli Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu was there last week. Paul writes, off topic again. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Paul. You can text anything you want. He said, read most of J.D. Vance's book on hillbillies. J.D. would make a great VP in charge of strengthening families. Strengthen families, exclamation. They're great. This is a great goal for the Republicans. It is a great book, and it's a great story. If if you haven't read the book, read it. If you haven't watched the movie, watch the movie. I I responded to Paul and and asked him if he had watched the movie. He said he prefers to read, and I get that. I've I've done both. I've read the book, not recently. I read it a few years ago. I did go back and watch the movie, Peggy, and I did uh, just this past week. And how anyone could say that J.D. Vance is not a good candidate for vice president after he was able to overcome what he overcame as a young child, living in the poverty that he did. J.D. Vance is the epitome of the American dream, of of someone coming from just absolute horrible conditions, putting himself uh, through school, becoming a, a, a Marine to fight for our country, run for the U.S. Senate successfully, and now potentially vice president, and maybe president after that. The Democrats are just terrified of J.D. Vance. That's why you had Chuck Schumer over the weekend uh, putting out the narrative that Donald Trump was regretting his decision and, and, and suggested that Trump, within 10 days, would be asking for a, or, or appointing a new vice presidential candidate. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. J.D. Vance is a good choice. Uh, Texter, this is Faye, says, Joey, to hear Cackle say no meat equity, 80% tax rate ought to make every red-blooded American crawl through glass to vote for Trump. All Dems read from the same script, so they all are evil. Lord, have mercy on us one more time. Thank you, Joey, for your dedication of telling the truth and your hard work. Thank you, Faye. I appreciate you listening. Appreciate you uh, your comments on the text line as well. Yours is welcome. You can email me too, joey at joeyhudson.com. I love to get your emails. I will always 
respond. Just send me a quick note, joey at joeyhudson.com. Look, there's a reason why we should all be concerned about Kamala Harris's lack of, of success as the border czar. You know, they're, they're really trying to uh, convince us that she was not the border czar, that that was just a play on words, that she was her she was tasked with getting to the root of the problem diplomatically through uh, other uh, South American countries. Look, what I know, whether you call her a border czar or not, I don't care what you call her, what I do remember was that Joe Biden asked her to find out how to fix our southern border. Call it what you want. Call it, if you want to say she was, she was uh, asked to get to the root of the problem, well, the root of the problem is you have all these people coming from, South, uh, from uh, South American countries through Mexico into our country. All right, so if that's the root of the problem, how do you stop them? Because she did not stop them, and we have had record numbers during the Biden administration. We don't know who these people are, and that should concern Kamala Harris. It should concern Joe Biden. It should concern every member of Congress. Every American should be concerned about who has, who's in our country right now and potentially who could be still coming into our country. Give me an example. Over the weekend, we learned that three Palestinian migrants had crossed into the United States illegally through the southern border. They were detained after they were found to have terrorist ties after the fact, they were already here. Federal law enforcement sources told New York Post that one of the migrants had salacious photos on their phone, including an image of a masked man holding an AK-47 rifle. In addition to the Palestinians, one migrant from Turkey is suspected of having ties to terrorist groups as well. And these people are already in our country. Just by luck, they were detained before they were turned loose. It's unclear which terrorist organizations these illegals were allegedly affiliated with, but still, this is just an example, and this is what the Biden administration does not want us to know, but it's an example of why we can't allow our southern border to continue to be open because people are coming into this country who want to do harm to you and to me. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the Share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in November, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your emails always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the My Pillow special, $25 for the My Towels six piece towel set. When you use promo code Joey, just go to mypillow.com. Always use promo code Joey. We're back again tomorrow. Hope you will be too. Remember, God's got this, He's still in control.